Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at how we can quickly make a camouflage material. And if you've not heard of Turbo Tools, then I'd recommend you check it out on either the Blender Market or on Gumroad. And what it does, it will speed up cycles rendered for a typical indoor scene, often as much as upgrading your graphics card by two to three generations. Find out more and see user reviews in the links below. So let's get started, we'll add a new shader. And we'll start off with, uh, let's actually use Suzanne. So Shift A, we'll add Suzanne Monkey. Control 2, that'll smoother. So open up the shader editor. We'll apply a new material, turn on the shade smooth. Or we'll turn on material preview. And let's just add a HDRI world environment. Let's turn on Cycles Render, and then we'll connect this in there, and then we'll add, with Node Wrangler add-on installed, Control t and now we can rotate the environment. And if it's a little bit slow to rotate the environment in the viewport, you can go into the World Settings, Under Settings, change Surface Sampling to Manual, and then increase this to something like 2048. That will just uh, decrease the resolution of the HDRI image, but only for lights and reflections. But for the camera, it will still appear identical. And now we can rotate that in real time. So let's bring back up the object mode. And we'll start off by adding Shift A, S, a Musgrave texture. So plug this into the base color. And then Shift A, S, and we'll add a mix node. Mix color. We'll plug this into the factor and we'll say we want this one. This will be the base color. So I'll make the base color sort of a dark green. And then for this one, we'll make it a bit of a lighter green. All right, so we've got two colors on there and we can now change the Musgrave texture properties to get the look that we want. So I'm actually gonna Put down a ramp node in between and we'll do control shift on this one so that it connects it directly to the material output and now we can see this one without the influence of these two nodes here so i'm going to increase the contrast so we get more of a sharp edge on these white parts probably take it all the way up in fact maybe take that down a bit actually and bring the white further across and we'll change the detail, turn it up a little bit, and now we'll turn the dimension down so we start getting a bit of a more of a pattern around the edge. And we'll turn, I don't know how you pronounce that, lucanarity. We'll turn it down or up until we get the effect that we want. This will just make it more bumpy around the edges. Maybe something like that. And then we'll just add a little bit more contrast so we're not getting this little gradient on the edge we'll try and get it as, as close as we can so i'll bring this right across to about there all right so now we've got the mask we can plug this one in there Control shift on this one and what i want to do is overlay another one of these on top of this we'll create a group from this we can see that we don't have any inputs so let's set those up now we'll go back inside the group so go back in here we don't want two results, not quite sure why that happened. We're going to the group settings over here, and I'll just get rid of one of these results. And this one, I'm going to plug in to the output here. I'm going to call this mask. And then for the inputs, I want to be able to control all of these options we've got on the Musgrave texture. And I also want to be able to control the colors over here as well. So I'll just copy this one across. And now I'll plug this one in there, and this one in here, and now we can go about renaming what we've got in here. So this one, top one, is going to be the base color, and this one is going to be the pattern color. In fact, we'll just name it base and pattern. All right, so if we come outside of the group now, you can see we've got these options. So we can now modify this. Hang on, why are we not getting the base color? Plug it back in, I'll show what happened there. And now we can duplicate this. So Shift D, 
So I'll put this over here. And we're going to plug this one into the base. And this one is going to be over the top. So we can actually change the color of this one now. Let's say for a red, for example, modify these settings. And now we've got another one over the top. And we can set whatever color we want. And then we can change all the settings on here. And if you want to then modify the scale of all of these at once, what we'll do, we'll go inside the group. And I'm going to plug in for the vector at the bottom. And now in here, so we can now press on this one and press Control T, and that's going to hook up this node for us. I want it to go into the vector though at the bottom. And I'll change this to object. And then we can control on here the scale. So Shift A, S, value. I'll plug that in there. And now change the scale. And it's only going to do this one initially. So we need to pass this into here as well. And rather than having wires going all over the place, I'll just come in here and I'll also output this vector that's from the input directly into the output. And I think we can actually get rid of the mask. We don't really need that. So I'm going to delete the mask in the output of the group. Get rid of that one. And if we come back out, we can pass the vector that we've passed into this one to this one here. And then we can control both scales at once. Maybe we'll go with the brown on this one, actually. Or something like that. And then obviously you come into your BSDF, and we can start making it into more of a material so we can turn the roughness up and then add a little bit of sheen. Although generally, I never use the sheen option. It's not the best thing to do. It's uh, If you do any multi-pass denoising, don't use sheen. Instead, what I'd recommend you do is Shift A and put down a mixed color, drop that in there, and then Shift A, S, layer weight, and then you can control whether it's going to be this color that we've created, so the pattern, or whether it's going to be that white sort of thing you get with the sheen. So if I turn the sheen off here now, we can control that over here by turning this down. We get a little bit of a, a white edge. Let's just turn off overlay so I can see that a bit better. And that's a much better way of making the material. And of course, if you want to then get a texture to plug into the normal, so you get a sort of a, a a uh, you know a, a cloth texture to it you can go to any website maybe ambientcg.com and then you can just do a search for the material that you want i think we can search i'll put in fabric and then we've got all these different fabrics and if we have a look let's see which would be a good one for camouflage probably let's go with this one and I'll just download, I only want the normal map, or yeah, I'll go with the normal map. I'll go with 4K, and then inside of Blender, we'll just drag in the normal map that I've just downloaded. Now do Shift A, S, normal map. Make sure we change this to non color. Then we'll plug that into the color. We'll plug this into the normal, and then we'll get a sort of a fabric effect on there. And then we can change the scale of this by Control T. And on the scale here, we'll just put a value into it. So I'll search for a value. And we'll plug that in there. And now we can control the scale of that fabric pattern. Something like that. And that's it. So that's how you would make a camouflage material. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.